Hey, what's up, guys? Just got through uh, doing a review or reaction, excuse me, of uh, Nukes Tops 10. Did it something a little bit different. I added in uh, little timestamps there so you could go ahead and see what is on the list. Um, yeah, let me know if that's a, you know something you like, and I'll start throwing that in more often. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to head into uh, one of my favorite content creators. And God, I sound like a broken record every time I fucking say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, I really did. I, I can say this wholeheartedly. I didn't get, I didn't pick up on Mike from that chapter until, well, after he had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of uh, subscribers. Uh, with Mr. Ballin, I picked up on him when he had like maybe less than a thousand people uh, subscribed to him. So I've been a long time subscriber to uh, Mr. Ballin uh, way, way before I ever even thought about using a microphone and a, you know, a webcam for uh, YouTube and starting my own channel. So, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. So, uh, yeah, let's get into uh, Mr. Ballin and see what he has going. I haven't uh, reviewed or reacted to any, uh, too many of his videos lately. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. In 2016, a couple was walking up this dirt path on this wooded hillside when they came up to this huge barbed wire fence. And all over this fence were signs saying no trespassing and warning people that what was on the other side of this fence was very dangerous. But the couple ignored these signs and slipped through a break in the fence to the other side and just kept on walking. Minutes later, that couple would come face to face with a monster. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do. And we up. You know, I just noticed it now. Um, I can't rem remember the name of the actor, but he was in Robin Hood Men in Tights. He was the king, uh, where his mole kept on moving around. Uh, as an actor, he was very well known for always speaking with his hands, like, you know, the inflection of his voice. If it would go higher, he would go, you know, use his hands higher, go lower, go lower. Like, he, that's what he was well known for. And so, knowing that, that he kind of gained that that reputation he just started you know using that more and more often almost uh in a hyperbolic type of manner you know and he certainly did it during robin hood men in tights which is still a classic i love that movie um but yeah i've never noticed that until now about mr ballin but he does use his hands a lot to talk and it's just i i don't know why i never picked up on it before but yeah it's <laughs> it's kind of funny upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to do the like buttons dishes, but be sure to leave all of the cups and bowls right side up inside of their dishwasher. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. While she was in high school in Dayton, Ohio, Raquel Bain became known as a bit of a thrill seeker, primarily because she would do something called car surfing, which is exactly what it sounds like. She would climb onto the exterior of cars and hold on to the roof while somebody else drove it around. In addition to seeking out these physical thrills, Raquel was also drawn to psychological ones, like going to places that were supposedly haunted and seeing if she could spook herself. Following high school, Raquel kind of calmed down and became less of the wild teenager she was known for being, and instead she really focused on building a life and a career for herself. And so she would go to college and she would earn her degree in surgical technologies, and then by 2009 she was employed full-time as a surgical assistant in Dayton. Also around that time, she had her first child, a son, who she adored. But despite creating this life full of stereotypically adult, mature things like having a career and starting a family, 
Deep down, Raquel was still very much the thrill-seeking wild teenager she was back in high school. But as an adult, she just never had time to go seek out those thrills. So with that in mind, fast forward to April of 2016. By this point, Raquel is 26 years old. And that month, a very rare weekend popped up where Raquel did not have to work and she didn't have any childcare responsibilities. And so wanting to take advantage of this free time, Raquel asked her boyfriend, 41-year-old David Nee, if he would join her on a road trip that weekend to Louisville, Kentucky, where Raquel wanted to check out the infamously scary Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Back in the 1900s, Waverly Hills was a place where tuberculosis patients were sent. Tuberculosis... So I worked at the Denver VA Medical Center after I got on, out of the music industry. It was my last job before I got it, uh, back into acting or got into acting because I was in acting classes, but I never had a gig until um, recently, till 2020. Um, and then that year, COVID happened, and the gig that I got uh, was for a Bass Pro Shop commercial, which who knows if that would have been like... Uh, you know, a spokesperson for the the shop, but that's neither here nor there. Go COVID was, you know, supposed to be locking down everything, and they got in trouble here in Colorado because they weren't closing their doors, and um, the sheriffs actually had to go in and close the doors. And you know, to me, I'm not necessarily a hypochondriac, but I watch a lot of what I'm mindful of germs. And I think working at a hospital does that to you. And especially at the VA medical center. I mean, I know for you vets, I am so, so sorry for the way that they treat you and handle you there. I know they're extremely understaffed and I know that you know, a lot of their people are, you know, under the union. So, for instance, whenever something was dirty, you would always hear a janitor like, I'm going to clean that fucking shit. And, uh, you know, I wasn't responsible for the janitors. I was a supervisor working with people with disabilities in vocational training. And I look over at these assholes and I'm like, you know, you guys are vets. You're not going to fucking clean this? But when they had replaced the the secretary um, because of the wait times and all the shit that was going on, like on 60 Minutes and all that, um, he had came to the Denver VA because, one, the new VA that was being built was way the fuck over budget. And surprisingly, they asked us, meaning we were contractors, how we should design the new logistics area where we're receiving incoming packages. Now, these packages contain narcotic medications, you know, uh, lab samples that were on dry ice. I mean, all this highly sensitive material. And we were asked to, you know, be a part of designing it. And, uh, you know, it's sad to say, whenever you had to bring in the Army Corps of Engineers, you know you're fucking up somewhere. And that didn't happen because of us. Our, our area was, was finished. But they still built the new VA, not understaffed, but um, basically too small. <laughs> it still wasn't sufficient enough to provide the medical care of as many people as it was supposed to, because we have a lot of people from the surrounding states, given that Denver has exploded in size and popularity and some of the specialists, you know, some of the best specialists from around the country and around the world will work here in Denver. They're not going to go to a smaller place like Utah or Wyoming or Oklahoma or, you know, places that we border. Not Wy oh, I said Wyoming. Um, Nebraska, uh, a lot of these poor patients would have to come to the VA. And uh, I remember getting there at 8 o'clock in the morning, leaving at 4.30, and they were still there. Oh, 
I'd just be like, Jesus Christ, are you kidding me, man? And yeah, it used to just piss me off. But when this new new you know secretary came because of the problems with the new VA and all that, that place looked like you you could eat off the floor. I mean, that's how much they cleaned it. And I was like, shouldn't you be cleaning it like this every fucking day for the vets that we serve and not for some asshole who's going to be gone by the next uh, fucking election when they get replaced? Oh, it pissed me off. I remember so many people like, oh, are you going to go here and speak? Like, fuck no. Why do I want to go here and this asshole speak? What, that he's going to make, you know, these sweeping changes and, you know, our vets aren't going to have to be like this. Give me a break. This shit still went on for years. And I hope, I mean, it's, it's not going on to as badly as it used to be, but look at how much they went after the whistleblowers. You know, I didn't work with patients that were having to wait, but I sure as shit would have said something way the early on. Our vets, who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom, should not have ever endured that. And what that has to do with what he's talking about is it once was a tuberculosis hospital. And so whenever we had like a desk installed or, you know, a picture hung, they had to use essentially like, you know, when you see on Breaking Bad, when they're cooking the meth and they have it all, you know, like kind of quarantined off you know, with the plastic, you know, from the floor to the top. So none of that leaks out and then it's vented out. That's what they had to do at this, at the uh, older Denver VA Medical Center that for people who live in Colorado, it used to be on 9th and Colorado Boulevard uh, or 9th and Claremont. And whenever they drilled into the walls, they had to cordon it off because it was a TB hospital, a tuberculosis hospital. And it also had asbestos. Asbestos isn't going to give you cancer. It will only give you cancer when you start fucking around with it. So if you're like up there, like moving around and getting it, you know, spread around, yeah, then you have a problem. But you could have asbestos in the walls, and you know, it's not going to give you cancer. But it's not good to have it there either. And I'll tell you what. I just mentioned where I live. There is. A brewery, it's very well known, that has asbestos all throughout their brewery. And, yeah, FDA doesn't do shit about it. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Or TB for short, is an infection of the lungs and it can be deadly. Today, there's a cure for it. And that's the same thing with asbestos. Gets in the lungs causes cancer. But back in the early 1900s, there wasn't. And so most of the people who went to Waverly Hills died there and usually very slowly and painfully and in total isolation from their families because in virtue of being sent to Waverly Hills, they were effectively being quarantined to stop the spread of the disease. Waverly Hills would eventually shut down permanently in 1961 because by that point the cure had been found and after it shut down the building basically just sat there. Nobody else came in and turned it into anything else. And so this building is basically abandoned and lots of people began sneaking in to see what it was like in there and a shocking number of these trespassers reported seeing ghosts inside. Today, the sanatorium is still very much in the same condition it was left in, but the Waverly Hills Historical Society has stepped in and made it very hard for people to sneak into the building. However, knowing people do want to go in and look around, the Historical Society has begun offering guided tours of the sanatorium, and these tours are given exclusively at night to increase the spooky effect. And so David, who had only been dating Raquel for a month when she asked him to come with her to the sanatorium, he was not really that keen on doing this. It did not really appeal to him to go walking around this totally terrifying place, but he could tell it was important to Raquel. She was really excited about it, and so he agreed to go. A few days later, on the late afternoon of April 23rd, the new couple left Raquel's place, they climbed into the car, and they began driving south. 
Three hours later, they arrived in Louisville and they stopped to get dinner. And then after they were done eating, they looked at the time and realized it was only about 6.45 p.m. And the tour they had scheduled at the sanatorium was not until 10 p.m. So they had a few hours to kill. And before David could suggest anything, Raquel already had the perfect idea of how they should kill this time. She told David that earlier that day, she had learned about a spot just outside of Louisville that might actually be more terrifying than the sanatorium they had come all this way to see. And so Raquel wanted to spend these few hours checking out this new spooky spot. This spooky spot was a rickety old, narrow, abandoned looking bridge called the Pope Lick Trestle. It's located just east of downtown Louisville in this heavily wooded area. The bridge is about 800 feet long, and at its highest point, right in the middle of the bridge, it's about 90 to 100 feet off the ground. And this bridge connects the tops of two of the bigger rolling hills in the area. But the bridge's physical appearance has nothing to do with why it's considered so spooky. The reason the Pope Lick Trestle has become a central part of Kentucky folklore is because locals say there is a monster called the Pope Lick Monster that lives underneath the bridge. It's half goat, half man, and when anyone is near this bridge at night, this monster is supposed to come out from underneath this bridge. And then what happens next is very ambiguous. It kind of depends on who you're talking to. But generally speaking, once the Poplic monster has emerged and it sees you, you're dead. Now, how you die ranges from the monster leaping out and attacking you with an ax to the monster using some sort of mind control to lure you up onto the bridge where you leap off. David, after hearing this suggestion, was again not really that keen to go do this really terrifying sounding thing, but seeing the excitement in his girlfriend's face, he agreed to go. And so the two left the restaurant, they climbed back in the car, and they drove for about 15 or 20 minutes to the Pope Lick Trestle Bridge. The bridge actually passed over a relatively main road, and so the couple parked just off the side of this main road, and then once they were outside, they began looking for a pathway up this hillside to get up to the bridge. And very quickly, they found a well-worn dirt path that snaked up the side of this wooded hillside that looked very much like it would bring them up to the bridge. So with Raquel in front and David behind her, they began walking up this dirt path. And as they're walking, they start to see signs that clearly say, no trespassing. But they ignore them because they're looking at this path thinking, okay, lots of people clearly come up here, so we've gotta be okay. And so they keep on walking up this path and they're getting closer and closer to the top of this hill where they think it's gonna connect with this bridge. And right as they're getting close, they see there's this huge chain link fence, this eight foot tall chain link fence with barbed wire across the top that extends in either direction out of view. And so the couple walks up to this fence and there are more signs that say no trespassing, private property, and there are additional warning signs saying that what is on the other side of this fence is also just plain dangerous. So turn around and leave. You guys know right here is all way to hire. As Raquel and David are staring at all these signs and this fence, they see not far from the path, somebody had clearly bent two of the fence posts and created a narrow gap in the fence that you could slip through. And so from David and Raquel's perspective, that looked like the way other trespassers must have found their way up to the bridge and so it must be safe. And so once again, the couple disregarded all the warnings. They made their way over to this gap in the fence. They both slipped through and they kept on walking up the hill. Just a couple of minutes later, they reached this clearing, which was at the top of this hill. And once they were in this clearing, they were able to turn and they could actually see the bridge. It was only a couple hundred feet away from them. And it was totally intimidating. By this point, it's totally dark out. And from their perspective, all they see is this very narrow bridge that they know is 100 feet off the ground at certain points. And they can see there's no guardrails on either side of this bridge. It would have almost looked like a tightrope kind of extended off into the darkness. 
But even if the couple was really intimidated by the sight of this bridge and with all these warning signs before it, they were able to put their fear aside and just keep on going. And so with David now in the lead and Raquel behind him, they walked the couple of hundred feet over to the start of this narrow bridge. And when they got there, without actually stepping onto the bridge, David came to a stop. He turned around to face Raquel and he gestured for her to come stand next to him so they could take a selfie with the bridge in the oh background. God, because David at this point is thinking, we're not gonna go on this bridge. We're just gonna look at this bridge, take some pictures and then we'll go. But Raquel, who he's looking at, gesturing to come stand with him, just walks right past him onto the bridge and takes several steps out onto this narrow, rickety old thing. And then she stops, turns around, and gestures for David to come with her and walk across the entire bridge. And David, again, is having his second thoughts, but he sees Raquel wants to do this, and so he agrees to go. After they had walked about 100, maybe 200 feet across this bridge, the two of them just started laughing because it was totally exhilarating what they were doing. Not so much the quest for the Popelik monster, but rather the very real risk they were taking walking this tightrope bridge in what the middle bad. of the night. No the couple way. would continue am... to very cautiously. Sorry, I don't mean to speak over him, but I am totally afraid of heights but quickly make their way across this bridge. And when they reached about the halfway point, when they were at the highest point from the ground, the bridge itself begins to shake. And then from behind them, they hear this loud grinding sound. And so the couple, they whip their heads around and they see there are these two bright glowing lights that are looking right at them all the way on the start of the bridge. And they realized Can't be a fucking it's train. a train. Oh, when Raquel and David <laughs> walked up that dirt path and snuck through the fence and reached the top of the hill and could actually see the Pope Lick Trestle Bridge, they would have also seen the train tracks in the hillside that clearly extended onto the Pope Lick Trestle and went across the bridge. This was a train bridge. They would have seen that. But it's assumed that the couple who didn't live in the area and so didn't know much about the Pope Lick Trestle, it's assumed they thought, well, you know, this is a train bridge, but it's got to be abandoned. It certainly looks abandoned, and it does. It looks totally old. It does not look active, even though it is. Or the couple thought, well, this is just an old train bridge. It might be active, but surely no train is going to come through anytime soon. We can get across the bridge before a train arrives. But of course, they were wrong. When the couple turned around and saw these two headlights bearing down on them, they quickly realized they would not be able to outrun this train. The train's clearly trying to stop. It has seen them. It's hitting its brakes. It's sounding its horn, but it's just clearly moving too quickly. So they cannot run to the other side to safety. And because this bridge was meant for a single train to pass through, there was no other track they could just jump onto to avoid being hit. And there were no walkways on either side of this railway. And so literally all they had was the track that this train was going to cross over and they were on it. And so with no other choices, David yells to Raquel that they have to climb down and hang off the side of this Fuck bridge. That. Now oh. there were these wooden slats that Lost Boys ran underneath the rails. They ran perpendicular to the rails and these wooden slats kind of extended off the edge of the bridge on either side, just a couple of inches. And so in theory, if you were holding onto the outside of one of these wooden slats and kind of dangling off the edge of the bridge, a train could cross those tracks and not run over your hands or fingers. You would just have to hold on that whole time as the train is rumbling through. And so David, he flops down onto his stomach and he's trying to lower himself as fast as he can as this train is getting closer and closer and he's yelling for Raquel to do the same thing but she's not really moving very quickly and finally David he gets in position he's hanging off the edge of this bridge on these wooden slats and he sees Raquel she's not quite there and then the train comes flying through it strikes Raquel and sends her flying off the bridge to the ground below. David would somehow manage to hold on the whole time as this train went past him. And then once the train had passed him, he pulled himself back up onto the tracks. He ran the rest of the way across the bridge. He went down that hillside. And when he found Raquel, it was immediately apparent that she was deceased. In the end, the railroad was not issued any citations or sued for negligence. 
It was determined they did their due diligence by setting up that eight foot tall barbed wire fence with all those signs telling people to stay back and warning people about the hazards of going past this fence. And so it was actually David who got in trouble for this tragedy. He was cited and charged with a felony of unlawfully disrupting and or delaying a train causing financial damages. He would plead to a lesser charge of trespassing and would be fined $2,300. Shockingly, this tragedy is just one of many that have occurred on the Popelik Trestle Bridge. Since the bridge's construction in the 1800s, there have been dozens of people who have died on this bridge. And several of these deaths, many of them fairly recent, the last 20 or so years, have occurred under the same conditions as Raquel's. People went looking for the Pope Lick monster and then were struck by a train. So that's gonna do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to do the like buttons dishes, but be sure to leave the cups and bowls right side up in their dishwasher. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. We now have a podcast called the Mr. Ballin Podcast that puts out brand new exclusive stories on Monday mornings. And on Thursday mornings, we put out remastered audio of our best YouTube videos. That podcast is available on all platforms right now, but in just a couple of days on November 1st, 2022, it will only be available on Amazon Music. We now have a registered 501c3 charitable organization called the Mr. Ballin Foundation ah, that makes it as exempt. easy as possible for you to join me, my family, and my team in supporting those whose lives have been most impacted by violent and heinous crimes. Monthly donors to the Mr. Ballin Foundation Honor I'm Them Society military. will receive free gifts and exclusive invites to special live events. But the real reward is helping to create a new ending to the story for victims of violent crime. Go to mrballin.foundation and click on Get Involved to join the Honor Them Society today. We also have two additional YouTube channels, Mr. Ballin Shorts and Mr. Ballin and Espanol. We also put out near daily content on TikTok, Facebook, and Snapchat. He has a lot of stuff going on. Man, you know, I see the thrill-seeking side of things, and yes, that that is, you know, I have a lot of friends like that. But... I mean, you really got to look into something like this. If this train, like, it, it might look old, but I mean, is it active? I mean, honestly, that's just some preparedness shit that I would do personally. But I don't know, teach their own. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I mean, sad, but yeah, they shouldn't have been doing that crap. Anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful evening and a wonderful day tomorrow. And yeah, I will be back first thing tomorrow. So y'all have a wonderful night. Get a good night's rest. Take care.